and welcome to ASKIMO TV. I'm talking today to Dr. Fela Murphy. Dr. Murphy is the clinical lead for pediatric surgery and urology at St. George's Hospital in London, specializing in undescended testes and incontinence. Hi, Dr. Murphy, how are you? Fine, thank you very much. Wonderful. Dr. Murphy, today we're going to be having a discussion about undescended testes. Um, so let's begin with what does undescended testicles refer to? So an undescended testes is a testicle that has failed to come down in the normal pathway from within the abdomen down into the scrotum itself. So there's a number of different terms for this, such as cryptorchidism or maldescent, but in reality it's a testicle that doesn't hasn't made its way completely all the way down into the scrotum. Are there different types of undescended testes? Indeed, there, there are different ways of describing them. There's a number of different types of um, diagnostic lists. But in reality, there are two main types to make it very easy. There are testicles that have failed to make it all the way down and are palpable, and there are those that are impalpable and cannot be detected. What percentage of baby boys, uh, prem and non-prem, will have this condition? Uh, it's, it's terribly common, really, actually. At full-term normal male infants, around 3% of all boys will have an undescended testes. If you're preterm, well, the more preterm you are, the higher incidence, because in reality, the testicle makes its final journey from the abdomen down into the scrotum from the last trimester. So those children who are born at 24 to 26 weeks, the vast majority of those male infants will have a degree of male descent. Uh, so it could be up to 30, 40 percent uh, in the vast majority of preterms. But it's very important to remember that even though you may be male descended or have undescended testes at, at birth, it's not unusual for the vast majority of these to descend over the next three to six months. If a boy has undescended testes, does it automatically mean that he would require surgery? Um, no, not absolutely, but it's very important to define when the testicle is undescended. So if it's at birth, two to three percent of all boys have an undescended testes, at birth, but only one percent will really have an undescended testes at three to six months. And if it's not down by three to six months, it's not going to come down. So in reality, it's only really 1% that we worry about, and that 1% do need an operation. Talk me through the surgery options, um, what's done, should you have to result to surgery? Well, the classical surgical operation is a very straightforward procedure, which the majority of centres are now aiming to do uh, in the first year of life. And what the classical operation is very straightforward. The child under a general anaesthetic will have a small incision made in the groin and the testicle will be freed up and then that would allow the testicle to be brought down into the scrotum where it's placed with a separate small incision into the right space in a simplistic term. There are other ways to do it and a number of other different techniques which involve sometimes a single, a single incision say for a very particular type of testicle. And of course, if you cannot feel the testicle at all, the vast majority of patients will need keyhole surgery to have a look inside the abdomen to find the testicle in the first place. What is the prognosis after the surgery and will it vary from child to child? The vast majority of patients have, and young boys, have a palpable testes, and that's a very successful operation, and the vast majority of patients can be brought down without any major problems and with an excellent prognosis. Of course, if the testicle is higher, so it can't be felt, that's, it's much more likely that the testicle is abnormal, or the testicle itself isn't really very good at all, and it may be better off to be removed. So from that situation, you could do that as a bad prognosis, but you're better to have your bad testicle taken out than left in because you have another 80 years with it. But for the vast majority of people with a simple palpable testes on one side, the prognosis is excellent. What are the risks, if any, to this procedure? Well, it's a general anesthetic, so there are risks. They're very, very low risks, and I always tell my patients that, to be honest, you're more likely to have an accident driving to the hospital or even in our car park than you are to have an anesthetic-related risk. 
Um, so there's a small risk from the anesthetic. There's a very small risk for a wound infection, a um, little bit of bruising in that area. It can be a little bit painful, but if appropriate medication is given, the children are usually bouncing around the home that evening. A small number of patients will have a testicle that's quite poor and be brought down, but will not survive. That's really less than 1%. So the majority of palpable testes are absolutely perfect. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Thank you so much for speaking to me today. No problem.